Hello and welcome to a little playthrough of a game called Manor Lords, or the demo of Manor Lords in particular. This demo is very fun and I thought I'd, I'd <laughs> try and joke through a little bit of it. So let's start a new game. We can only do Rise to Prosperity. And I think I shall be Lady Patricia, an older woman. For my coat of arms, I will pick that and a banner like that, red, with a half crescent, almost. Now, Banner Lords is a medieval city builder simulator, <laughs> I think. It's hard to tell, this is just the demo. We're gonna pick a lot of starting supplies to make the game a bit more easier, I suppose. It's a beautiful game. And what makes it really beautiful is you can build these free-flowing villages that really add to wonder and marvel. At least I find so. It is the demo, and the demo build of two or three months ago, so it is quite janky. But with it, we shall be able to build a beautiful town. Let's read this message and see what it beholds. Establishing a foothold. There is a fire at the heart of every settlement, a bastion of safety, warmth, and light against the darkness of the world. On this cold spring morning, your men blow on their fingertips, their breath clouding in the air. But there is plenty of work to warm them. As toil begins, you can almost imagine hearing the ring of anvils, the toiling of the bells, the tolling of the bells, and the cries of the marketplace. Possibilities. In the distance, fog lingers in the hollows of the land. The world is quiet, watchful, waiting for you to choose which of those to make real. It gives us a beautiful little poem and a list of things to do at the beginning. We need to construct a granary, we need to construct a logging camp, a forager hut, and a storage house. And I think we should accept. Now, this game is rather beautiful, and it runs in real time, as you can see. These simple souls down here. <laughs> Just enjoying their walk. So, first things first, we should add a road. Here it gives us a demonstration of what to do, but we'll skip those. Let's take from here, link up to there, and then add a road to the main one. Some winding thing around the trees, I suppose. We want it to be meandering, coming to each forest and curving around them, like so. Now, we're going to need to build a logging camp, as lumber runs the economy of most of this. Luckily, we are right beside a forest, and it would be a perfect place to put it. So we will build our logging camp at the end of this settlement here. Possibly 
along the edge here, trying to minimize the loss of trees. There does the least damage to nature. And that we should do. They shout at each other as you play. We also need to construct somewhere to harvest food. It suggests a forager's hut. And I think that's a wise enough choice. We'll pop our forager's hut near our original camp, I think. As it does make sense. Come on, people. Get to work. There we are. <laughs> and thus we have the beginnings of a town. Near enough anyway. But, we need to construct a storehouse, and a granary as well. Storage. Granary. Constructing a granary can be a difficult choice, really. Where to put it? <laughs> Perhaps here, on the crest of this. No, I think. Here, we do not wish to uproot the trees, so we should build it flowing along, like so. Let's go, people! <laughs> I think their voices are rather loud. Let's turn them down. For while it is wonderful, it is rather unnerving. Now, there are five families so far, and you can prioritize what gets built when. So right now, this is getting built. In fact, something is coming along there. They're walking towards it. And if you go down here, you can see this oxen coming through. Waddling along a beautiful field. <laughs> it's a male one, in fact. <laughs> They've even modelled in the pizzle. That's something very detailed. Now we've built a granary, a logging camp, and a forager's hut. But we have yet to build a storehouse. This stores logs and shields them from the weather. So I think it should be placed as close as possible to our logging camp. I think that's only fair. Pop it. Ooh, where? There, perhaps. Limit the damage to the trees if at all possible. Now. We have those building away. Perhaps we should also consider knocking up a few houses. Houses in this game are a magical thing because they render dynamically and can differ in little ways from the others. We have five people, but not enough wood for all of them, I don't think. So let's build three houses. I think our little village should be in between our food and wood. It seems only right. This in itself is beautiful, as you can build stunning little towns like so. Oh, <laughs> and within them, build amazing villages. <sighs> Do we want to build houses there? Hmm. I wonder. Perhaps 
here we could have three houses and that seems rather beautiful let's construct our houses there manor lords is modeled during the well middle medieval period and late medieval period from the 11th century to the 15th century um, AD and or CE depending on how you define it and obviously it has a Western or Central European appearance to everything you'll see it as the town begins to take shape if we come over here to the logging cabin we can see it being built in real time knocked up and together as the wind rustles through the trees and the cow bellows on once oh the oxen I should say now that's another beautiful thing about this game is that that in real time they construct the houses it's obviously not perfect they're hammering the ground and this is being built <laughs> but it is still rather beautiful I will say or at least I find it to be so perhaps I'm biased against these things but I deeply enjoy the little little touches from the rendered campsite with the chairs sometimes at night they'll even come sleep here down to the beautiful wooden barrels <laughs> and the bird that sits down amongst the flying flowers just picking at the ground so much effort and detail went into here and there certainly are some beautiful games that try and do something similar but very few succeed on this level you can hear dogs barking in the distance and crows everything that surely is something of true value and beauty our logging camp is almost done we just have to wait for it to be finished a little bit more building and it should be knocked together now for the demo build at least wood forms the foundation of your economy you can't build anything without wood so we'll add a worker to the logging camp for now and allow them to batter on as they build though we will need food and this forager hut will be an early supply of it to be sure yet I do worry it will not be enough to feed people so as well I'm going to construct a hunting camp now over here we have wild animals so I think it's fair that we build the hunting camp closer to such goods like the others it requires wood to build and takes a little while to do but unlike the others a hunting camp is a much smaller footprint you can see here these red lines and that models the damage you may do to the habitat of the deer which in itself is beautiful and makes you really consider what you're doing to the land building close to the deer might enable you to kill a great deal early on but it will destroy your ability to eat for generations to come and you should always be mindful of that especially in a game like this where things are modeled so meticulously now we've built a hunting camp we should probably build a place for them to sleep so here as well we will build a little hut perhaps off to the side 
Let's build a road along here, around the hunting camp, and onto the main. Next to that road, we shall build a small little house just along here. Oh, it says it's too small. Perhaps we built too small a house. There we are. I think minimizing the damage to the farmland course of action. So we shall build a small house aside our hunting camp for the sake of nature. <laughs> Along here you can see the forager's hut being built. As this one comes to pieces We'll move forward a little bit and just observe as they construct the house. Soon we will have food and that in itself is a beautiful thing. This game is certainly very peaceful. You can play it faster if you want. Down the bottom there are speeds. Sometimes it's nice just to let things run at real time, even if it is a little janky. <laughs> As he hammers the ground here, building his hut. Ah. Medieval Europe was an interesting place. A lot of people describe it as a backwards time. Time lacking the knowledge of the f after the fall of Rome, as the Islamic world took the pillar of knowledge forwards. And in many ways, this is not a false assertion. It's not wrong to acknowledge that there was a significant decline of technological and societal development after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, at least in Europe. But it should all be also be noted that these people were not living in despair and famine. They were living lives just like ours, and just like their ancestors had before. Despite the absence of material wealth and centralized governance, they pulled through. And today, many people in Europe, particularly Western Europe, owe their existence and lineage to the struggles of these people. This game is modeled during a period in which Europe is beginning, or Western Europe is beginning to develop greatly. <laughs> and it's period where it ends, the 15th century, is roughly where the Renaissance began, or at least the Renaissance truly began. Here, our forager's hut is almost completed. Our houses, sadly, have not been constructed, but our storehouse is underway. How very exciting. <laughs> this game is peaceful not only because it lets you see things build slowly over time, but because it lets you consider, in contemplative terms, the true effort it takes to construct even a simple village with a small little hunting camp. And for that, I am ever grateful. Our forager's hut has come through. And the game does simplify some things. For instance, we can only harvest berries here. Which, while were foraged, are not the only things that can be foraged. Vegetables can be foraged. Herbs and spices can be foraged in many places, and fruits and other such things can be as well. But it simplifies that all down to berries. <laughs> Likewise, it simplifies wild animals down, but if you zoom in here to the wild animals and then click on the hunting camp, 
you can see that it's just deer being harvested. There are more animals to hunt than merely deer. Yet so much love has been poured into these models. <laughs> so much consideration and care into crafting a little bit of life in this world. And that in itself is beautiful. Another thing that's great about this game is the sound design. You'll notice as we leave the forest that wind picks up, that it spatters across the landscape, and that in itself is beautiful. <laughs> as we get close to the town, we can hear sounds of construction as the granary is built. And each building has a beautiful little noise. <laughs> to it, which I personally find rather wonderful. We look at the granary here. They've rendered in a foundation for it, which in itself is considerate and beautiful. <laughs> Some of the world's earliest civilizations were originally built around temple cities, where the temples were also the granaries goes to show how important we place food in our mental hierarchy <laughs> and how much that matters to us all. Yeah, I'm just making sure houses are not the main thing being built. Now, I will ever so slowly back away and allow it to speed up. As we watch them move faster and see things become constructed, it's important to note that the wind howls above. And there is a rush on, because this is modeled on northern or central Europe. There is a winter and it is harsh and it is damaging to the crops. You cannot grow, nor can you harvest berries during this winter. And people will freeze in their little tents if they do not get shelter by then. So we must hope that our five souls, our five men, are able and capable to build before the great winter comes. Because it's in the northern hemisphere, April is the beginning of spring. Oh, sorry, March to May is the beginning of spring. <laughs> Summer is between June and August. Autumn is between September and November. And winter is between December and February. Which suggests a fairly mild climate, but still dangerous one. It says here in spring... Frequent raining occurs, and we may harvest berries as they begin to regrow. In summer, we can start harvesting the crops themselves if we choose to grow them, and in autumn, it becomes more and more difficult to harvest crops. It's recommended to plow and sow during autumn, but be warned that berries will start disappearing. By winter, berry deposits vanish, and firewood is necessary for survival. It says seasons are deeply connected to the people's lives and affect different jobs. <laughs> she tells a beautiful tale of who they are. If we go back to normal speed and zoom in, we can see that the houses are being built. Oh, I've made the mistake of putting this up high on the priority list. Ah, foolishness of me. All the workers have left the granary alone. A deep shame. I think 
on the building of this first house. We will leave for now into a peaceful afternoon. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video.